Luke, thank you for coming to the Hockey News. Welcome. It's great to be here. <laughs> Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hockey News, come on. <laughs> exactly. When did uh, when you were growing up, when did you sort of first come across the Hockey News? Uh, uh, I came across the Hockey News, I think I was uh, 16, 17 years old. It only happened to me. I saw it, I think, when I was playing hockey in Hall, mm -hmm. and I actually saw it in Ottawa. For the first time, you know, because uh, it wasn't around Montreal too much, you know, especially like my neighborhood was mostly French. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have a lot of English publication at the time. So I didn't see it until then. But then, you know, obviously like any good hockey player, I became a, you know, a member and just kind of got it on a weekly basis. Right. Well, it's, uh, you know, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about your, uh, your business career. Mm -hmm. So after you retired from playing, you decided that you wanted to get into the business side of things. Yeah. Now, I've known you for a long time, and when you were playing, you were always interested in business. Mm -hmm. You know, you were always asking questions about business and different things you were always curious about, even when you were on the ice. When you were on the ice and you were coming to the end of your career, is it something that you knew you wanted to do? Uh, I wasn't sure uh, exactly what I was going to do or how my position was going to be, but I was sure one thing is, like, we needed changes in L.A. I... Uh, I was very fortunate. I played for the Rangers um, when they were at their peak in the, in the 90s. And then I played with Detroit when they were at their peak, you know, in, in 2001, 2002. And I had a very specific, uh, like, uh, vision of what an organization should be. And uh, in Detroit, you know, you always hear the word culture and sport. And, you know, for me, I think the opportunity I had to be in New York and in Detroit really gave me something that I, a vision that I agreed with on, on changing, hopefully our organization for the future, where we could change a culture. And so you, you got an opportunity to, to go to the Kings and mm -hmm. go back, go back home. Yeah. And yeah. obviously you jumped on that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I owe it to Tim Laiwiki when he was the, the president of AEG and, <clears throat> and the Kings, uh, when I signed in Detroit, he told me that <clears throat> he wanted me to terminate my, my finish my career in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was a free agent again, uh, I literally, I just called him. I said, hey, I've been forgotten what you told me, and uh, this makes sense for my family, and this makes sense, uh, you know, it just seemed to make sense for everyone. And that's how this came about. I came back, finished my career in L.A. We had a lockout, so it gave me more time to get ready for my after career. Mm -hmm. I knew I, if I'd play one more year, I'd be lucky. So I kind of started preparing myself for my after career then during the lockout. And so when you took on the job and started running the, the, the business side of hockey, mm -hmm. the, the marketing, the sales, the, the, the season tickets yeah. and all that, did you, did you, did the first year you did it, was it a little bit challenging for you to sort of uh, get your, your, cause you know, in a, in a locker room or on the ice, you know exactly where to go and what to do, but yeah. your first year, what was your first year like? Uh, my first year was, uh, was interesting because, um, you know, when I retired, the first year off of retirement, I became a consultant. So right away, I asked uh, Tim Laiwiki if I could be on the main floor of a the AEG company, just to to learn everything that was going on uh, along, uh, around the company. And uh, and then uh, the other thing that I I asked is if I could attend every King's meeting, like you know, and uh, and I did. So by the time a year later, that uh, kind of made a pitch to Tim about uh, and Mr. Anschutz about. Uh, you know, take an next position where we would have someone that would uh, go to bed and wake up in the morning and take care of the Kings. Um, it, it was, uh, what was important for me was to bring the, the right people, you know, with me. I was very lucky that uh, at the time a fellow of name of Chris McGowan was available to come with me and I think he started as a CMO, became rapidly a CEO. Today he's the CEO of a uh, a company that owns a Portland Trailblazer, and uh, and uh, I think he's uh, he's part of uh, running even the Seattle Seahawks now. Mm -hmm. So he was a really smart guy. So I, I brought in with me someone that was smarter than me. <laughs> so that really helped me. And uh, we kind of went along, and uh, we we started building our own staff, our own sales staff, marketing staff, and so forth. And we took that year to build it. But uh, I learned quickly that if you surround yourself with good people, you're going to do well. Isn't that like a team, any team when you think yep. about it? Yeah, it's a, I built it like a hockey team. It was about we knew, you know, if you're going to want to win the Stanley Cup, you're only as good as your fourth line. You're going to have your star players, and they're going to have to produce to get on the playoff run. But if your fourth line outplays the other team's fourth line, 
you're going to win. And uh, that's kind of like the way we built our team. So that was, what year was that that you first year? This is, um, uh, I think I retired in 06, 06, so it would be 07, 08, yeah. So you've got 10 years under your belt now. Yeah. And so from, from then to now, what's the biggest change in you as a business leader today as it was 10 years ago? I think I'm off on the time because it's my 12th year this year. So, <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. Like, yeah, hey, 10. 10. You're right on the, on the calculation. <laughs> I'm off on it. But um, um, I think from from then, you know, I just know more. Uh, I'm learning every day. I think in 10 years from now, I'll know a lot more than I know today. Um, you know, a lot more experience. Uh, I've been fortunate. Uh, guys like uh, John McDonough in Chicago has been a mentor of mine. I call him you know, probably a little less uh, in the last few years, but he's been really good to me. Uh, uh, guys like Cam Neely, Mr. Jacob, Mr. Anschutz obviously has been great. Our, C our present CEO for AEG, Dan Beckham, and these guys have been really good to me on helping me along the way. And I would say, you know, I knew then that I had to learn to be really patient because as a player, when you have a bad game or a bad moment, you get up the next day, you have a practice, and the next game, if you win, everything goes good, you just move on. In business, if you make a mistake, it might take you six months to, to fix it. And so you have to learn to be a lot more patient. So that's the one thing I had to learn quickly. And I probably know that more today than ever before. And, uh, but I've always been a big fan of like having a goal and sticking to the goal. Mm -hmm. We did that in 2007, and we're doing the same thing today every year. So when you wake up in the morning now, taking care of the Kings, do mm -hmm. you, and forget about the, the hockey side of business, the yeah. hockey side, what's mm -hmm. on the ice, the product on the ice. When you wake up now and, you know, you're charged with taking care of the Kings, what's the big challenge for you from a business point of view? Uh, well, we have very, very high expectation in LA. Uh, our expectation, we always, our goal is not to be the best organization in hockey, is to be the best organization in sport. So it goes by how we treat people, and, and the way we go about it, uh, you know, we were very fortunate. We won it in 2014, the best organization in sports. But it's, uh, I would say when I wake up in the morning now is, unfortunately in sports, you do go as your team is performing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been challenging now. We have a lot of new young sales staff and the team hasn't performed well. So it's about keeping them up and keeping them to believe in what they're doing every day. And, but at the same time, the vision of our team, our organization hasn't changed. You know, win or lose, we, we don't change. We, we know every once in a while, if you're looking, it's almost like you assume there's a tunnel, there's a light at the end. Every once in a while, you'll have to open a door on the side and take a look and maybe make a, a move or something. But, you know, what we're setting out for it hasn't changed. Has your experience on the ice, uh, the leadership experience on the ice, mm -hmm. being an alternate captain and, you know, being a, a winner all the way through, yeah. uh, does that impact how you operate business-wise? Uh, yeah, I, uh, the way we operate our organization is a lot like the way a hockey team would be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody's going to work hard. Everybody's going to, you know, give their best. But uh, you're only as good as your weakest link, and uh, and I know that. So, so a lot of the way we operate or talk to our staff is always in that vein, just like we have to to have everyone on board and to what we're, what our goals are. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what it comes down to really, yep. I mean, to constantly. So like when you, you know, you're running this business now and it's a, it's a, it's a multi-million dollar big enterprise, yeah. it's a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. What, what do you see into the future as from, from a revenue possibility, you know, new revenue streams, gambling, um, uh, e-sports, where, where is it going? Because at some point in time, you can only charge so much for a ticket. Yeah. I mean, I think when we looked, our, uh, the LA Kings have, uh, <clears throat> have done real well in the last 10 years. Um, when we look at it, obviously, uh, AEG as a company is involved into esports uh, tremendously. We lease building, we, we bought a piece of a team, and so we're, we're, we're really intrigued by it uh, as a company, and we got a lot of people working on it, uh, you know, more and more. So I think there's an upside there. Um, <clears throat> you never know which game the kids are going to get to, and even though you're trying to get the right game, you just don't know what they're going to do. And mm. it's a, it's still 
what's it's there's a cool factor of being on the ground mm. even though it doesn't seem to be anymore mm. you know um, <clears throat> I do think uh, the next um, uh, TV deals coming up are going to have a huge impact in our game I think it could change from both sides from the player side and uh, and a team side and uh, obviously the gambling is something that we're already seeing a couple teams that are doing real well with it and uh, if it's something that uh, we do it right uh, you know, it's going on in our world. It's been going on for years. So, so I'm very happy we have an opportunity to bring it in-house and kind of control it better. And I do see that there'll be a lot more revenue just with a, those few things, obviously. But I think the distribution of, of the game is what's most important. Yeah. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate you coming by. All right. It's good to see you as, as uh, Thank usual. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks, man. <laughs>